Hey, it's your girl, Cynthia. Welcome to a, another late night with me. Before I go to bed, I wanted to share something with you. Um, I wanted to ask you this, but first of all, let me welcome you to my channel. I know I look a little tired and I hope that, um, that doesn't take away uh, my, my, um, the meaning for this video. I'm just a little tired. Um, welcome to my channel and I hope that, um, you subscribe to my channel and, um, yeah, thanks for tuning in. I wanted to share with you and I also want to ask you, um, have you ever gone out of your way so much so that you've tried to please somebody in order for them to see you? And when I say see you, it's almost as if you're trying to, um, by their love, by doing different things, buying their love is just one of them. It could be buying their love by um, trying to take care of them, um, spending money on them, um, just just whatever you know, whatever you've done to go out of your way to try to please somebody. You have, I think we all have. I think we all have. But the one thing that I've learned throughout my journey, and this is just my experience. And like I said before in a prior video, maybe one or two of my videos, I can only speak and reference my experiences. Um, but what I'm what I can say is what I'm gonna say is this: you should never have to buy anybody's anything. In order for them to see you. If they can't see you for who you are and what you are. Then let that go. Let it go. And save yourself some heartache and some pain. The only person that you need to fulfill. And try to buy. And you don't even have to buy him. He's free. Is God. He is not pleased. At any time. When you're trying to seek and fulfill someone else. A lot of times we can, you know, a lot of times we can be our own worst enemy. Trying to do something for somebody else. And in the long run, we're only hurting ourselves. So. I encourage you. You don't have to, you don't have to buy anyone. You're enough just like you are. Know that. Remember that. And don't let nobody tell you any different. So when I click off this session of uh, my video, just stay tuned and wait till the end and listen to what I have to say in the next clip, but in the same video. I want to thank you so much for tuning in and just taking the time to listen, um, you know, to what I have to say. Um, my goal is to always help you and not harm you. And um, I, I hope that you want to grow with me and let me grow with you. You know, we all have something to bring to the table. And that's that's the beauty of human beings. You know, there is never a time where I have what I have is better than what you have. Or you have is better than what I have. It doesn't work like that. We're all we are all a part of one one, mm, one amazing person. He sees us all the same. I know sometimes some people think that they are better than another person. No. No, they are not. We are. We are. We are all the same, but we are. We are created differently. We're created different for different things. So again, stay tuned for um, the end of this video. And thank you so much. I love you. And I'll see you in the next video. Bye-bye. Hey, it's me again. I wanted to ask you a question. Have you ever been so into somebody or something that you tried to please them in every way that you knew how? Hoping that You've done enough to get fulfilled by them or so that they could 
accept you more or see you more? Have you ever just gone out of your way so much that it almost changed who you were as a person? Um, I was reading my Bible last night and I came across this interesting um, passage about Leah, Leah and Rachel. And the reading goes a little something like this. It is our own desires and the degree of their fulfillment that produce either joy or sorrow in our lives. But personal fulfillment can become an idol. It can develop into such an obsession that we are living for happiness more than we're living for God. Thus part of our salvation includes having our desires prioritized by Christ. God wants to and will satisfy us beyond our dreams, but not before he is first in our hearts. A wonderful example of this can be seen in the life of Leah, Jacob's first wife. Leah was unattractive, unwanted, and unloved by her husband. Jacob had served Laban, Leah's father, seven years of Rachel, who was Leah's youngest sister. On their wedding night, however, Laban put Leah in the nuptial tent instead of Rachel. Although Jacob actually did marry Rachel a week later, he had to work another seven years for her. So Jacob had two wives who were sisters. The scriptures tells us that Rachel was loved by Jacob, but Leah was hated. And when the Lord saw that Leah was unloved, go to Genesis 29, 31. We, we must understand this about nature, the nature of God. The Lord is drawn to us, to those who are hurt. The Lord saw Leah. What wonderful words. The Lord saw that Leah was unloved. He saw her pain, her loneliness, and her heartache. Leah, though unloved by Jacob, was deeply loved by the Lord, and he gave her a son. Leah's reaction was predictable. She said, now, my husband will love me. But the time was not yet. Jacob still did not love her. Twice more, Leah gave birth to two sons. And each time her desire was for her husband. Yet Jacob's heart did not desire her. For Leah, as well as for us, there is a lesson here. You cannot make another person love you. In fact, the more pressure you place on others to accept you, the more likely they are to reject you instead. Leah's concept of fulfillment was based on attaining Jacob's love, and now her problem was worsening. For not only was she unattractive to Jacob, but her jealousies were also adding to her lack of loveliness. As Leah became pregnant a fourth time, a miracle of grace occurred within her. She gradually became aware of that. While she had not been the focus of her husband's love, she was loved by God. And this fourth pregnancy drew near to completion. She drew nearer and nearer to God. She became a worshiper of the Almighty. Now, as she gave birth to another son, she said, Now I will praise the Lord. She named that child Judah, which means praise. It was from the tribe of Judah that Christ was born. Leah had been seeking self-fulfillment and found only heartache and pain when she tried to do it. But as she became a worshiper of God, she entered life's highest fulfillment. She began to please God and not herself or others. As she found fulfillment in God, he began to remove from her the jealousies, insecurities, and heartaches that life had conveyed to her. A true inner beauty started growing in Leah. She became a woman at rest. It is not counsel or classes on success or self-esteem that we need. We need to simply discover God's love for us.